Guys, deluded, I'm back again. France 5, England's under 19s nil. And yeah, let's crack on. Well, we knew going into the game, or at least if you've been paying attention to this England's under 19s championship, I mean, it's been a football of summer. We've had two lawn, under 17s, Euros, under 19s, the Milk Cup, or I believe they've changed the name to the Super Cup or something like that. The event held in Northern Ireland's going on. There's a bag of football one that's been on collectively. People are at pre-season and them things there. So, yeah, if you've been paying attention to the Europe, European under 19s Championship, you'll know that it's been a tasty group between Turkey, France, Ukraine and England, obviously. And it's in such a situation where Eng um, France dropped points against Ukraine, I believe, in their first game. England, um, really and truly, even in hindsight now, shot themselves in the foot with a draw against Turkey. I believe it was them. So both of them two nations needed to win or Ukraine were going through into the next round of the competition. Two sides in England and, and France you'd expect to go through anyways, but it's tournament football and like I just said England definitely against Turkey should have won that game and shot themselves in the foot. France were a bit shell shocked against Ukraine and both could have been in a better situation, bit of situ better situation. Pardon me. So yeah, going into the game is do or die for a lot of these young players. It's now or never. I mean, it's the f if if them players, some of them like croissants progress to be the players I believe they could be they could be potentially in World Cup semi-finals or World Cup must win games or European Championship games at senior level. So yeah. I, there's not much to say other than the first. I'd say, do you know what? You have to say around the first twenty min, the first forty min, the first first half went to France. But how do I break this down for you lot? Like, I don't know, people. I mean, let's say, let's just say the first, let's say first half an hour. I think it became one nil at something. I got the note somewhere. When did we score? Twenty five minutes in, we obviously, um, we obviously, we obviously went behind for the first goal for France. It was a lot. It was a lovely move between France. Um, I believe the young the young right back his name's um I've lost his name now the young England right back I've actually lost his name, um, forgive me for getting his wrong his name wrong but he's made a kind of an error he's it's a poor pass eventually France take advantage of it and and it's it's laid onto a plate for the France lad to score and it's one nil and to be honest the whole game like I said I don't know where to go with this it was all France all France physically throughout I've been impressed with them the whole tournament but physically mentally tactically. Um, energy wise it was all France I mean they were pressing like hyenas out of possession there was no options for England England couldn't get out of the half for the whole game or the f game that I saw because I'll get on to that a bit uh, um, later but it was just it was just like I was torn between feeling sorry for England and thinking where could England go better and admiring France because like I've said before I think even a year ago I said this what the hell is in the in the water in France because they've got so many players being developed so good I'm sweating and them things there but like it was just a madness. The fullbacks, both of France's fullbacks are going forward. Diaby, I believe his name is on the right, the PSG lad that was on loan to Cotona last season. On the right hand side's a nuisance. Obviously, we've got croissants, which loosely reminds me of Jacob balling out. Midfielder dominating. We're just, they just look, France just look a, a level above. And we just can't get out. Whether the man's in, the fullbacks are pinned in. Adam Lewis and the young right back for England, they're pinned in because. France won't let them out. The strikers are frustrated. Throughout the first the first half, to be honest, but prior to scoring, let's say first 25 minutes, because I believe they scored on the 25th minute mark or so, not many England players had touches. And the ones that did were forced to play safe passes and things like that. From an England point of view, it did feel like people weren't being brave. These are the games where you need to show courage. It did, for me, feel like people were playing hot potato, especially the ones that have... I don't want to say senior experience, but the ones that have won cup competitions or advanced to later um, competitions at club level, I don't want to name drop anyone because that's unfair at this level. But France just looked a level of a level above, to be honest, man. Some of the passes, some of the moves deserved goals, and we were really lucky not to be at one 0 behind earlier, to be honest, because we were just even when they scored the first, which was um, how did they score now? Like I said, like I already said it. The man made a mis the man made a mistake, and eventually it was pounced, it was pounced upon and laid on a and laid on a plate for a France lad. But prior to that, I mean, just after that, they had the exact same um the exact same opportunity. Fight the same player made the same mistake. So you have to question England's concentration levels, mentality going into the game versus the French, because the France France were the complete opposite. I've been impressed with them tactically. You see midfielders sitting in into the fence when they need to and allowing the fullbacks to press. You see strikers pressing. You see strikers um, variety in positions. You see midfielders taking up wonderful bits of play. And it was lovely. It's love like I've been, I've really enjoyed watching France this tournament, but even this game for obvious reasons I want England to win, but France is are admirable at this point. They just look a level above a lot of these players. Yes, it's a depleted England squad. I mean 
the ones that you're looking to that could have possibly went to this tournament, they're all trying to break in at first team level. Um, and Ketty and Nelson of Arsenal, Jaden Sanjo's trying to continue his thing at Dortmund, Ryan Sessegnon's preparing for a good season with um with Fulham in the Premier League, Foden's trying to break into the first team, Hudson Odoi who actually had a good game for um I believe against Perth Glory for for um. For Chelsea today, he's trying to break in. So obviously that's for another vid that conversation because you look at Kusans who plays for Gladbach and he's played a lot and things and things like that. And Mangala Sar who's played a ridiculous amount of times for his club side. They're both still at the Championship, but you that's for another debate. Both of them are relatively in the first team, the rest aren't. So it was a depleted England side without the regulars, and we were trying to retain this competition. So that two 0 uh, essentially, well, I I I, I spoil it there. This is another thing which goes into concentration and a lot of these young players are going to need to learn, especially the likes of Chalaba. It wasn't his fault, but Chalaba, I say him, because he's going on loan to the Championship next year. We're 1-0 down going into half-time. There's four minutes or so before half-time and we've switched off. Midfielders and a couple strikers are caught high up the field. Not that I blame them because we do need to get out. We struggle to get out of our own half all game. We do need to get some passing together in the final third. We're hit on We're hit on a break. It's a lovely pass from Camara, the... the, the um, the Marseille fullback, I mean full um centre half, lovely pass over the top. Eventually it falls it falls to Diaby, I believe, and he squares it for Maya Linda. And I mean I've seen some calamity misses, especially from a couple of Portuguese cool players in as many games, um this tournament. But you can't miss from two yards out, and it's two nil. And again concentration now at one nil, two nil you can still get in the game. We know two nil is a dangerous lead and things like that. But you're going into half time, one nil down. There's already enough L's to held behold. Your job's already hard, you're already not playing well. It's about what you do when you're not playing poor when you're we're not playing well or playing poorly. You need to just sit in. And this is what these tournaments are div uh, are designed for. It's unfortunate because at this point, obviously going into half time is two nil down. I'm watching it on a record because I wasn't at home at the time, clearly, obviously. And sadly, Sky doesn't want to record all of all of my all of the footage. So I, unfortunately that, that's all I saw of the five nil of the 5-0 defeat. Obviously, with three other goals, shout out to whoever scored them. It was bound to have a, a bag of individual errors in all of them. It was probably a poor performance. But I don't want to be harsh on the young lads, but it was a poor performance and absolute choking um, based on what I saw today. But at the same time, I can only credit France. I'm going to obviously watch the highlights of the next of the, of the, the three goals I've missed, but I can only credit France because... They're doing a great job at all levels. At all levels, they're in, they're interesting to watch. At under twenties, at under seventeens, at under nineties, like we're seeing. Obviously, they want to win the World Cup. Whether the circumstances were favorable favorable to them is another story. But credit to them. Like I said, I've been impressed with France. Not even just away. You guys know I love young players and potential and all the tactics and all of these things. In fact, not even away from tactics, away from potential and 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 projects and all them things. There's a the tactical intelligence of these players. They're swapping, the formations are being changed. People are swapping roles. Like people are be behaving street smart. The likes of Costance and, and Mangala Sar, even though he got, I believe he's been sent off in this tournament. So it, it wasn't really showing your experience in that logic. But at the same time, they're, them players there that are, I don't want to say senior figures, but they are senior, senior figures compared to the rest of the side. Standing up to be counted. Kamara, I don't know if his future is at centre half or in defensive middle half back sort of role. But between stepping out and playing these passes, he's still extremely naive defensively, as shown when they played um, Ukraine. But he's surely one for the future. They got him. They got Dembele. I believe his name is. I'll talk about them in the in the in the in, the, in my scouting vids, of course. But there's a bag of players that France have, man. A bag of players. A bag of players. Obviously, my man Guy Tangletain, however you want to pronounce his name. No disrespect intended. But on that note, unfortunately, like I said, I only saw two of the of, of the five goals, and I'm gonna go and have to watch the highlights because. Sky wanted to be an enemy of progress and tell me my storage is done. But if you saw the other three, get a shout out to you, man. But anyways, that's what I saw. Like I said, it's disappointing that the tournament ends for England, regardless regardless of it being a depleted squad or not. Yes, if we're probably looking at it, Turkey's the game we should have won. Yes, there's probably many things we could have done better against France, but we could have gone into this game against France already through, basically. We shot ourselves in the foot against Turkey, to be honest with you. Like I said, it's a depleted squad, so it's unfortunate that we didn't have the best players to or a stronger pack to call upon. That's no disrespect to any of the players. They all did their thing. It's obviously shameful. Well, not shameful. For one of the better words, it's obviously upsetting is the best word for it because we won this tournament in the last edition but we were trying to retain it. And to go out under these circumstances when you probably, I don't want to say it's a favoured group because everyone's qualified for a reason and it's shown why you don't underestimate people. You're probably looking that we'd be ones to get to the latter stages, man. And yeah... 
But these are these are there's many things to be learned. Like I said, tournament football, seeing out games. Like I said, Turkey was the game before France. If you won that, it's, it's a different story. Switching on in games, how you start games like against France, regardless of me praising them, how you start against France because we look shell shocked is what makes the difference. Even if you want to be critical, even in the first game that we won, there's probably things you can look better at. But the likes of Adam Lewis, I feel Tav um, Tavernier's had a good tournament. If I had to think of any off the top of my head. There's been some decent England performers. Naya Kirby, when he, he got to start, obviously, against France, but when he's come off the bench, there's been a couple of good players that have played well for England, in my opinion, and done their thing. So a lot of them can go back to their club, their clubs and what's left of pre-season and try and break in. For uh, They're at the age where a lot of them are at the age now where they need to go and play football at some capacity. Um, some will probably sort out loan spells and things like that. But, yeah, man, guys, deluded. There's not much more to say. There's not really much more I can say on that front, man. So, yeah, like I said, man, credit to France at the end of the day. But it is what it is. And we look forward to, are we technically, I'm not too sure if this technically means we're qualified for the under-20 edition of the World Cup. I'm not too sure, people. But whatever youth competition we're next at, you guys know if I know about it, I'll try and watch it or talk about it at some capacity as I have today. Sorry for not being able to talk about the other three goals. It wasn't my fault, people. Guys, deluded. I'm out. Get in the comments, subscribe and do the rest.